And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Chief Corporate Affairs Officer of the Larry H. Miller Company, Amanda Covington. Good afternoon. I hope you've all been inspired, challenged, and informed with this morning and this afternoon's topics. I have the incredible and very distinct honor to introduce our 18th governor. He's a sixth generation Utahn, earning his first two degrees at Utah Institution, Snow College and Utah State University. And he married the most incredible Abby Palmer Cox. He is a rural son, a lawyer by trade, and a statesman by heart. Governor Cox has and is leading out on the state's most critical issues. He's a visionary who has today pulled business leaders, government leaders, those of you involved in nonprofits and associations, and educators together to help solve some of the most challenging issues that we're facing today and in the decades to come. Before I turn the time over to Governor Cox, uh, I thought I would share some of the more fun and personal traits about him um, given to me by one of his special staff members. So if you have seen him around, you know that he shows up, and that is part of uh, First Lady Cox's uh, movement to inspire people to get involved in service and several other initiatives. He also plays the bass guitar in a band with his brother, and he loves the killers. He rarely misses a Utah jazz game and is very deep on basketball statistics. He loves the smell of rain on alfalfa and can go for hours quoting movies and TV shows with his children. I watched him this morning because I heard he's a stealth texter and can even send a text while on stage. So while he's up here, maybe keep an eye on that. And finally, some of his favorite sweets are Chick-fil-A frozen lemonade, crumble sugar cookies, Reese's peanut butter eggs, and banana ice cream although he does not indulge often. It is a tremendous treat for me to welcome to the stage and to hear from the one and only Governor Spencer J. Cox. Thank you, Amanda, for that very kind introduction. I also like pina coladas and long walks in the rain. Um, no, I, neither of those things. It's, it's, uh, it's really incredible to be with you today. Thank you so much for showing up uh, to, uh, to this one Utah summit. And uh, I, there's probably a few explanations I need to give. First of all, there's this little rival rivalry between Sampy County and Emory County that you may have picked up on a little bit. There's this story, it goes like this, that, that Brigham Young sent a notice down to Sampy County and posted it up that said that they were all supposed to move to Emory County but only the people that could read went to Emory County. That's the way the Emory County folks tell it. For those of us left in Sampy County, we, we don't really like the version of that story. So I, I always like to remind them that the interesting part of that was that uh, nobody knows this, but Brigham Young actually wrote the notice in Braille um, because you'd have to move, be blind to move from Sampy to Emory County. So um, we... <laughs> We love Utah, and, and we, we love the, this summit. This is, this is the first time we've had this summit here in northern Utah because of the pandemic. Of course, I've only been governor for, for a little over a year now. And uh, I, I think I, I, I need to explain a little bit about what we're doing. Of course, we had lots of summits before. felt we were a little summited out, and so we wanted to combine some things. Uh, but, but there's a reason for that. There, there's a reason. It, it may have felt a little schizophrenic this morning as you hear all of these different subjects being spoken about, but I, but I think it's important, and this is maybe more of a reflection on, uh, on how my brain works. Um, I believe that ideas actually mate and create new ideas, and that it's really important um, to get new people and different perspectives and, and, um, and, and, and in a room together, having conversations and listening. So even if you're not from the energy field, even if your, your job has nothing to do with energy. I think it's really important that you heard today um, our, our new energy plan because I believe that really smart people with different skill sets can have insights into, into uh, what we're trying to do and, and that's how we solve problems. I've said this before, but all of the problems facing our society will not be solved by regulation. They, they won't. There is a role for regulation. That's what governments do. But, but the, the biggest problems of the day are going to be solved by innovation. They always have. So putting innovators, smart people together, thinking about these things. I read three or four books at the same time. Um, uh, it, it, 
drives my wife crazy, I think, a little bit. Um, but I do that because these ideas from different books give, give me an opportunity to, to cross-pollinate these ideas and, and, and come up with new ideas and, and new thoughts. And so that's what we wanted to do today. I wanted you to hear about energy, and I wanted you to hear about business in our state. I wanted you to hear about the point and what's happening at the point. And I wanted you to hear about the Olympic movement and what we're trying to do here. But I wanted you to hear about refugees and the things that are happening here because these are the things that matter to Utah. And by the way, you're going to hear, if you watch social media or cable news, uh, and I'll talk about th that a little later, um, you're going to hear about a whole bunch of things that aren't important, that aren't making a difference in the world. And, and, and they'll try to make you think that those are the important things, and they're not. Um, the important things are the things that we've talked about today, and this is where we need your help. I, I want to I share a story. I was, uh, uh, my brother-in-law convinced me to go golfing with him uh, on Saturday, which was a terrible idea because I'm a terrible golfer, but I went anyway. There were only two of us, so we ended up getting paired with a random twosome that was there. Um, we were down at Gladstone in, in, um, in Payson, and uh, these, these two gentlemen walk up, and we start conversing, and we played 18 holes together, and they were remarkable individuals. But what was really unique and what I didn't expect at Gladstone um, was is that these two individuals were not from Utah. They just moved here recently, so they live here now. Um, they were here, one was going to school, and the other one came with his girlfriend who was going to school. Um, one of them was from the Bay Area, um, the other one was from Maryland. And uh, they, um, they were a different race than me, they were a different religion than me, um, they had very different backgrounds than me. And they couldn't stop talking about how much they loved Utah. And it was interesting because um, Omar and Spencer were their names. And, and Spencer told me, he's like, my family told me I should not follow my girlfriend here, that this was a huge mistake. I should not leave the Bay Area and come to Utah. But I did anyway. And I have to tell you, they were so wrong. They were wrong about everything they said. All of those, those preconceived notions that they had of Utah were absolutely wrong. And I love it here. And we will never leave. Um, we really care about this place. And, and I, was, I was obviously grateful for that, but, but that led to many other conversations. He said, I love that you care about economic freedom. I see what's happening in, in your tech community. Uh, some of you may have missed it this morning. Um, one of the statistics that, that I am most proud of that Dan shared, um, for the past 50 years, from the first time they started measuring this, uh, the, the number of innovation jobs per capita created in a calendar year. Um, one state has been the number one state every year for 50 years, as long as they've been keeping the statistic. And that state is California, until this past year, when Utah became the state with the most innovation jobs per capita in the country. And that's very good news, and you heard that. That's, this, this, again, this is how we solve the world's problems. Um, but we've had all kinds of accolades, and as a politician, we love the accolades. We're, we, we love to take credit for everything that's happening in the state, right? That's, that's what we do. Um, but I know better, and you know better. Um, we also know better that there are problems in our state, right? Um, problems that we need to fix and that we need to work on together. Um, Mackenzie, who was up here earlier, uh, you remember talking with Miles about business and the business climate. Mackenzie said something that made me cringe. Um, and M Mackenzie, this is not your fault, this is my fault. Um, she said, she, she started to say something and then she said, oh, the governor probably doesn't want me to say this. Um, we finished last in that wallet hub survey of, uh, on, on women's issues, right? Uh, on being a place where women can, can have success in, in the state. It made me cringe, not because, of, of, not because she was saying that, but because she worried that I didn't want her to say that. Right? I, I hope nobody feels that way about our administration. We don't just want to talk about the good things. We want to talk about the hard things, the difficult things, the troubling things that we need to improve. And that's one area where we can improve. So Mackenzie, not only did I not want you to say it, I want you to say it very loudly. Because we got our entire cabinet together when that Wallet Hub survey came out. And we brought in one of the, one of the foremost leaders in women's issues here in the state, Dr. Susan Madsen. And we walked through every single one of those metrics in that survey to talk about how we could improve and do better and what, what sorts of things we could do. The lieutenant governor and I, as government, we can't fix all of these problems. That's a, one of the problems we have, this idea that government is supposed to solve all of our problems. That's a mistake too. 
We need the private sector. We need the faith-based sector. We need the nonprofit sector to join with us to solve these problems. And we can do it here. We can do it in Utah. That's, that's what gives me hope. Now, one of the other challenges is that we are kind of victims of our success. We are the fastest growing state in the nation. For one reason, we're really good at having kids, and that's good. We're the youngest state in the nation. Um, but, but now, for the first time, in-migration has, has surpassed internal growth. Uh, so so we're, we're getting people like Omar and Spencer who are moving here. And that's a really good thing, but it, it brings some challenges. Of course, what we're seeing uh, with, uh, with inflation here, um, and, and I don't have enough time to, to talk uh, on inflation, but we can have that, that talk another time and some of the ideas that we have to, to help fix some of that here, here in the state. But, but again, because of the success we're having, the price of housing is going up significantly. You heard, uh, you, you heard the Speaker of the House mentioning some of the things this legislative session that, that we worked on to help reduce the price of housing. But that growth is really Real and it is coming. Um, I, I, I had an opportunity to speak uh, a few months ago uh, to the Harvard Business School alumni here in the state of Utah. Um, any Harvard Business School alumni here? We, we've got a few of you. Yeah, a couple of you may have been there. Um, so I, I, I expect to show up and I expect to have like 20 or 30 people there, right? How many Harvard Business School alumni can there be in the state? Um, I show up 150 people in this room on a random Tuesday night. Those were the ones that showed up. And I was really stunned to see how many, how many were there. And uh, on a whim, I asked a question. Um, I just said, hey, before, before we get going, can I just ask, to, and this, this was me to the crowd, I said, how many of you have moved here in the last five years? I didn't get a full count, but it was at least 90% of the room. At least 90%. Almost every hand went up. That's crazy. That, that, that many people in that room representing that organization um, just moved here in the past five years. So, so one of the challenges that we're facing, um, we've heard a lot today about the Utah way and what makes Utah unique. And by the way, I believe in that. It's an ideal. It's not perfect. We make mistakes all the time. We do stupid stuff like everyone else. But we have this ideal. And this, idea, this ideal is that we work together, we collaborate that we, we don't let our differences divide us, and that we find better ways to do things, that, that the way we do something is almost as important as the thing itself. Um, and, and we've seen examples of that, famous examples. Uh, five or six years ago, when the religious community came together with the LGBTQ community, to, uh, to, to reach a, a, a compromise of sorts, but it was more than just a compromise. It was better than that. It was a way to protect uh, the LGBTQ community in, in, in hiring and housing, and it was also a way to preserve and even expand religious liberties in our state. And, and it, was a, it was a really cool thing to see those people together in ways that no one else in the country had been able to figure out. That's the Utah way, and we don't always get it right. Um, we certainly have examples even this year where I don't think we got that right. But that doesn't mean we stop trying. And so I, I share that because th this unique challenge is, is twofold. One, it's, it's for all those people who are moving here or coming from different places, uh, and maybe many in this room. How do we, how do we, help, how do we help you to understand the, the Utah way and that it's really good? And how, how do we convince you to bring the best of you and to add it to the best of us? Right? Um, and, and to remember that, that some of you left for a reason and, and not to change us into where you left, uh, because that happens too. And, uh, and, and so, and, and then the, the, other, the, other, the other issue is how do we remind people who have been here for six generations that that's, that's the Utah way? And, 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 and I'll finish here because this is where it's getting harder than ever because, uh, because as, a, as a nation, we are more divided than, than we have been at any time. And again, political scientists, they, can, um, they, they track these things and have way through surveys and, and others to track this. Um, since the Civil War, um, this is the most divided we've been as a nation. And it's so easy. 
It's so easy to fall into that trap, um, especially if that's the way it is in the state where you came from, or if you feel like, like your voice isn't being heard, or you feel like the world is changing too quickly, and, uh, and, and you're uncomfortable with what's happening out there. It's, it's so much easier, so, so much easier um, to watch cable news, to watch your, you know, your Fox News or your MSNBC, and then actually believe what everything that they're saying, and, and, then, and then just, just read regurgitate that thing. The danger, if I could, just as an aside, the danger of those cable news stations is that they make us dumber by making us think they're making us smarter. And it's just not true. It's not true at all. Um, and, 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 and it's incredibly dangerous. Um, I'm, I'm very proud to say that it's been nine years since I've watched Fox News or any cable news. I'm nine years sober, and I would... Uh, <laughs> Don't let them make you dumber. And don't let them make you think that everyone else is evil. Because it's not true. Yes, there is evil out there, and there are evil on both sides. But by and large, um, when we get proximate, when we get close to each other, um, that's how we learn. That's how we come together. Our nation, our world, is starving for community. Our nation is starving for neighborhoods and neighbors. Our nation is starving for kindness. Kristen Andrus shared today, and I hope you got to hear the things that she talked about, about reaching out to our refugee community. That's one Utah. That's, that's who we are, or at least it's who we want to be. That's the ideal. And we have to keep that alive, and we have to be intentional about it, because there are no guarantees. Just because it's been this way, just because Utah's been unique and a little quirky and different, um, doesn't mean we'll always be unique and quirky and different. But I pray it's so, and it will only happen if we work together. Now, um, as I conclude, I'm very excited. We've got, to, we've got a, a few other things that, that we're going to share, and Oren Cass is going to come, one of, the, one of the, the, the most incredible thought leaders right now on, on many of these issues, is going to come and, and, and present to us, and I hope you'll listen carefully to some of his ideas. You may agree with them, you may not agree with some of them, but I hope it challenges you to think and, and, and to think differently. But the other thing I would encourage you to do, and we're going to hear at the end, uh, the First Lady is going to come and share a little bit about her initiatives, and there's a portion of the hallway that you'll notice where, where those nonprofits, um, the good things that are happening in our state. And I hope, I, I really hope, again, we lead the nation in volunteerism and we lead the nation in charitable giving. I know it's been a long day. I know you want to take off, but stay and do something for someone else because it will heal your soul. It will make you better. Even if you don't want to do it, you'll be really glad you did it because that's what makes Utah special. That's what makes Utah unique. Um, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for making Utah the best state in the nation. Thank you for making my job easier. Because government can't solve all of our problems, but you can and you are, and I love you for it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Keep up the good work.